On episode 23 of the Hollow Chronicles, we have a collector tip, show me your collection, and of course, an Easter egg, and a very exciting guest. Dominic Pace joins us and shares with us his love for his collection, and also some news about an upcoming project he may be working on. The force is strong with this pod. Pass on what you're about to learn. Sandy, woo! I'm excited, man. I'm excited for this pod. There's, oh, I don't, need, almost, I almost don't know where to start. You're giddy. You're giddy. A little bit. A little bit. We we've got you know our our typical rundown, but we're proud to announce our very first guest on on the podcast, a fellow by the name of Dominic Pace. Yes, and uh, we won't get into it too much now. He'll he'll be the second half or the second part of the podcast we've recorded earlier but um yeah we hope to have some more guests as we kind of progress through this podcast experience and um he was a great first guest it's definitely fun to get another perspective on collecting and then of course the star wars universe it was a ton of fun he's a super cool dude so yeah. get stay tuned that's a uh, that's a must listen so what do we got? What do we got, Andy? Well, as far as the news goes, there's not a whole lot of news to uh, report, but there was a little bit in the in the toy area in the last week or so. We like that news. Yeah, like that and that's, news. that's important news to us. Uh, first off, um, Lego has announced that they're um, making a new Ultimate Collier Collector Series Star Destroyer. This thing is gorgeous and i i don't even i mean ooh, it's, it's it's amazing it's nearly five thousand pieces yeah it's probably going to be in the five to six hundred dollar range i, I can't remember. seven i think seven hundred ninety nine yeah oh yeah okay yeah six ninety nine by the ninety nine yeah, yeah. happens and 99 gets you every two time 299 only two bucks <laughs> nope, it's actually three plus tax <laughs> yeah. um it looks so good and it's so big that there is a uh, blockade runner that drops out of the bottom of it. Sure. Or gets tractor beamed into the bottom of it. One yeah. or the other. It just depends. I don't think they ever let them go, right? No. It's crushed the ship. Yeah, they kept that for their own yep. evil purposes. Think about that. Have you ever thought about that? About what? What happened to the blockade runner? Well, they scrap it? Still in the stars. There's sure. a theory for you, Twitter. Take that one and run. <laughs> Hashtag, blockade run. Hashtag blockade <laughs> run with it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my runner? Uh, so that that's pretty cool. That so, Josh. Let me ask you a question because, it, you know, for people that don't have unlimited means, you have to prioritize what you want sure. versus other things that you want sure. sometimes. So, knowing that this is a seven hundred dollar purchase. And also knowing that coming out soon is the um, remake of the Upright Arcade, Star Wars Arcade unit, and that's $500. Yeah. Which which are you prioritizing? Because they're both awesome. There's no wrong decision here. Yeah. But if you could only get one, which one would you get? There is something so epic about the Star Destroyer. Now it gets a little um, dwarfed in the following films, but the first thing you By see by the Super Star Destroyer. I know, I know. They're just one up, and yeah. right, Vader's like, I want a bigger one. That's and that's you hit. know, it's it's what we say about all yeah. those guys that drive big yeah. trucks yeah. with lifts. We get it, we get it, we get it, Vader. <laughs> we, you lost a few limbs. <laughs> yeah. We get it. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it it's so impressive, and of course, Lego is top notch in in their delivery of you know a fun but super accurate depiction of the ships all the ships in star wars i know that you are big on 
the ultimate collector series. Love them. And I've committed to much like the funk hole, which maybe we should touch on a little bit about your experience here, oh, Mr. Boy, uh, much like that. It, it, you, you, if you try and go after Lego from a star Wars perspective and go all in, you better have a couple extra jobs because they're expensive. However, if you kind of maybe focus in on the ultimate collector series, you still need a second job, but at least there's a finite number. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe like one a year. Yeah. Do that. Plus, so, plus after a build that takes a few thousand pieces, yeah. your fingertips just are raw, man. I remember when you text me after <laughs> you would, I tried texting you. You <laughs> finally committed to like, I'm putting together my Legos and, and went through like a week binge of Lego uh, uh, assembling. Yeah, they were raw. I don't think I, I don't think I had fingerprints for a while and so sh- should have robbed a bank. So part of my, part of my deal as a collector, and we've talked about this in the past is kind of targeting what you're going to go after and, and committing, you know, I'm a black series guy. That is a pit, a money pit because they continue to come out with new M- figures, more awesome figures and more awesome figures. Like we haven't gotten to that yet. We but haven't. There's, there's a few new, there's, there's a few more new coming, ones. Yeah. Well, a- but we digress. We can talk about that in a second, but with, with the uh, Lego star destroyer, that's probably a must have for me. It really is because more so than the upright arcade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I go the other way. Even though I'm all about... That's why we're friends. You come over and you check out my Star Destroyer. I'll come over and I'll kick your ass at that game. It'll be fantastic. Uh, Yeah, that's pretty fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) No, the Star Destroyer is beautiful. And I'm not into Legos like you are, but I really do see an opportunity to uh, get my kids involved, which is a big plus for me. So... It makes it a little less selfish of a purchase. I recently purchased the blockade runner to get to dip my toe into the. See how that uh, works with your girls. Yeah, yeah. Well, I already know my girls like the Legos. Um, I just have never put a, a Star Wars Lego set in front of them, so I'm hoping to do that. Throw a little Star Wars up on the TV. We're gonna watch it together. Maybe I might have to. I might have to give in and put something less Star Wars on TV to get them to put it together, but. Yeah, well, you can talk to Pete about that. Pete just did that with his boy. No, I heard that, and it was it was great. Pete from uh, Around the Galaxy. So, yeah. and he great got a, pod. He Go got listen. A, he got a Mark Hamill right. shout oh, out. Oh, by too. the way, if he did. <laughs> that was know. awesome. Yeah, which is which hey, is good. but we we got um, a Christopher Sean retweet, right? Be- for, and for those that don't know, Christopher Sean is the voice of Kaz from Resistance. Hey, he yeah. retweeted us. Sure, Psh, add it to the list. We'll just put it up there with Hamill and getting trolled by the Emperor. Boom. And Brian Herring. Yeah. And Mara Jade. Brian Herring trolled one of our commenters, though, which was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that uh, new piece. I, I don't know where I'll put it. That's my only dilemma. Hmm. And if you're watching on YouTube, you put welcome my, to my lair. And can, I just don't know where I'll put it. You can put it at my house. You're welcome. Right next to right next to the dam. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> um, okay, but we already mentioned this, but there's some new Black Series figures coming out too that were I don't know if they're leaked or if it was just time for them to come out, but um, I think they were leaked. But there was a new Ray, uh, an Episode Nine Ray, yeah, that, that had a staff and a lightsaber and that new droid. Is it E Zero or E D or? It's yeah. really simple. It's like E D. Now you're, yeah. E, I don't think it's ED. He's not ED? No. <laughs> Am I thinking of something else? <laughs> um, oh, man. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there is a Kylo Ren with a pieced together helmet. Yep. Uh, no, it says um, Supreme Leader. Oh, yes. Apologies. Supreme yes. Leader Ren. Ren. With a with the put back together red lined, sure. um, furry, furry hand assembly. It it kind of the the head the helmet or the head on it looked big like the helmet could come off. Hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. I couldn't really tell through the picture, but we did post these. Uh, so if you want to look through our Twitter timeline, they are recent within the last few days. Um, there was an off world Jawa. That's cool. Like Dark Jawa. Yeah, it looks like like he's seen yeah, better he's days. He's like, like ooh, teeny. Yeah. Ooh, mother effing teeny. Yeah. 
<laughs> he's thuggish. Uh, do you have a good Jawa impersonation? <laughs> That's, that's all good. I got. That's not bad. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, on the spot. You're I appreciate welcome. that. Welcome. Um, and then there was a from the from the new video that's coming or the new video game that's coming out. What is it? Uh, Jedi Order. Je- Fallen Jedi. Fallen, Fallen Order. Order. Fallen, Fallen Order. 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 Yeah. And uh, that main character with his little droid that hops on his shoulder. Oh, what the heck was his name? Like um, Karn or something like that. Or no, it's that's... uh. Shoot, what did I have? I have written. I don't that. know. You text me with it. I don't know. Anyway, it's a droid, or it's a guy. No, it's Cal Kestis. Cal, good Cal old Kestis. Cal. You're thinking of Kyle Katarn. I'm Different. Just... Cal Kestis. Cal Kestis. We got ri- with Dio. With Dio. <laughs> we, we, could we forget Dio? Dio. <laughs> Isn't that a band? It is. it is. You're thinking Devo. Devo. Whatever. You must whip it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And, of course, the last one, not to be forgotten, The Mandalorian. The Mandal that we haven't got a name. He is just The it just Mandalorian. The Mandalorian, which is fine. He looks awesome. Uh, he even does. though I've, I've kind of uh, decided to stay away from the Black Series, uh, I will be getting that one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get that one. That's going to happen. It's going... In the words of Wayne from Wade's World, she will be mine. She will be mine. Oh, yes. She will be mine. Yes. So um, that's kind of a tease for later on, too, perhaps. Um, Let's get through the rundown here. Let's do it. Show me your collection. This last weekend, we had an excellent collection from a guy by the name of Luke Cruiser. At great name. Great. I mean, Luke Skywalker and then Luke Cruiser. Yeah. He just seems like it's, Luke's it's lazier a, twin. It's a little like, too good. One to guy's like, walking the, in the sky. The other guy's just, he's just cruising. He's just cruising. He's just cruising. He's cruising. More chill. Yeah. Maybe he uh, likes the spice. I don't know. There, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, Guess anyway. what? He did make it to Tashi Station. Let's put it that way. Yes. Picked up a few power converters <laughs> along the way. <laughs> So anyway, Luke Cruiser at, if you'd like to follow him or tell him uh, what you thought about his pictures that he that we got to post up, at Luke Cruiser, which is C-R-U-S-E-R. Mm. Um, he's also, by the way, he's also one of the guys from the Bad Motivators podcast. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Luke so is... So I feel like he made that name up. But other than that, it's, it's fantastic. a pod name. Sure. I'd say stage name. There's no stages. Uh, why didn't we make stage names? Uh, yeah, like... Stay tuned for the next Hall of Chronicles hosted Where we... by, by Blaine Swordslinger and I don't know. I can, and, I Ace, do a, yeah, uh, and Ace Meteorite Destroyer. Yeah. Uh, that was weak. Yeah. Uh, anyway, his collection, he said he'd been collecting mostly for the last five years. So um, for those that are in the same boat, he had primarily collected Black Series and Funkos. And when I say Funkos, he had a corner of his basement with three layers, three levels of shelving full. I want to say there was like 150-ish Funkos. A literal funk hole. Especially in the basement. It's a funk corner. Is what it was. No, it's a black hole. You walk into that corner and you lose yourself. Yeah. And your wallet, I would stay. Your wallet. I would like, stay <laughs> staring at that wall for well, the, the two walls that came together there. I would, I could check that out. And, and it was cool how he had them arranged too, because he had like all the three POs together. And then like it. So all of the characters, if there were different Funkos of the same character, they were all grouped together. So they weren't like chronological how they came out. Mm. They were like all the Kylo Ren's, you know, the few variations sure. of the Kylo Ren's were together. The few different, like I remember the droids, the C-3PO's and the R2-D2's, a few versions of them, they were grouped together. Anyway, and over 150 easy uh, Funkos. Very cool. Yeah. And his Black Series stuff, as well as some books, and he had some, he had some very cool art. And let me let me give the artist a shout out here at Mike Pascal Art. Mm. So that's at M I K E P A S Q U A L E 
A R T. Mike, and we'll link that for you in the sure description. Uh, at Mike Pascal Art, some very cool original artwork hanging on the wall, like probably like around six. But he said uh, Luke said that he had more too that that weren't in pictures. Um, but all this stuff was down in his basement that he had said he had been remodeling. And what I thought maybe was the best part about all this stuff was that he built inserts into the walls, uh, shelving into the walls so that they are maximizing the space in his basement. So the things, so if, for those that can see behind us here, you know, Josh, you have shelves, right? And they're awesome. And they're able to display things in many different, you know, essentially any way you want. But just imagine that if all having all that shelving, but not coming out from the wall at all, they were in the wall, they're not taking up actual space, square footage of the room. Right. So I was totally impressed with those inserts and cutouts where he just filled those spaces and those shelves with Star Wars stuff. Well, a little pre-planning with your design when you're remodeling is fantastic. Yeah, right? it, was, huge. it was well thought out. And all of his stuff is put together intentionally. There's nothing just thrown together willy-nilly. It's not just like, I'm just going to put all my Star Wars stuff on this shelf. Or like the Funkos, putting all those Funkos together took time. Yeah. And you can tell that he takes pride in it, right? Yep. That's, and it's it's totally cool. So at Luke Cruiser, um, well done, Luke. It was a fantastic Luke, collection. Luke! <laughs> and uh, thanks for sharing the artwork of Mike Pascal Art. That was Excellent, and uh, I'm I'm definitely going to check out some of his stuff as well. Easter eggs, an Easter egg. <laughs> this Easter egg actually comes from um, a, an Instagram post, maybe it was a Twitter post, a few months ago from Dave Filoni. Hmm. You familiar? Sure. Heard of that guy? Yeah. Okay. Dave Filoni confirmed that the um the endor trooper at the end of return of the jedi right. that looks like an old guy with a white beard and right. we'll we'll link a picture um is in fact captain rex okay so the same confirmation captain, yeah it's, okay. it's it's confirmation that he uh he just went he just pulled from the old stuff and said yep that connects right with the stuff that he's in cuz he's you know obviously a fan of the old stuff as well and um, I just thought it was a it was a cool way to connect the old with the new. Yeah. Right. And it works. Now the cartoon likeness, you know, of Rex and and all the clones for that matter are very Tamira Morrison. Right. Yes. They all look the same. This guy in Return of the Jedi, obviously, that's he was you know a way 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 before that, but and he doesn't look like a clone well, per time, se time was not good to him okay <laughs> yeah but he does have a white beard sure and uh, he probably still was a little jet lagged from the drop into M indoor atmosphere it happens yeah, i fine. mean it, it, no fault of his own i mean they were all stuffed in that shuttle there's no way he probably sweaty yeah oh. probably tried to catch a nap and the, the fumes in this place <laughs> anyway but I thought that was a great little uh, connection. So the next time you watch Return of the Jedi and... Look for Captain Rex. Look for Captain Rex. Re Captain Rex is in the old movies, even though he's a new character. I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Moving right along. Oh, what have we here? Collector tip! Our collector tip for this week, and I can't wait to post a couple pictures of this. Um, at Michael's which is uh, at least in the on the west side of the United States. Michael's is a store where you can buy crafting materials, you know, paint. Yeah, like a big box craft store kind of. Picture frames. Medium box. Um, you can get artwork framed. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a crafty kind of store. You get tons store. of like St. Patty's Day stuff. Right, they have holiday decor <laughs> every year <laughs> or every season for any season. Really. All seasons. Uh, all seasons. Are right now, they're season. ramping up for Halloween. And Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Christmas is almost overtaking Halloween. It's... You should be done with your Halloween shopping, by the way. Hurry up. <laughs> um, but a collector tip this week that we've got for you is that at Michael's or stores like Michael's, where you can buy picture frames of all kinds, 
um, the display, the displays for baseball bats and the displays for footballs. Okay. So the football is a little more rectangular, um, a little more boxy, of course, accounting for the size of a football. And then a baseball bat is long. And, uh, these, these display cases are perfect sizes for the three and three quarter inch figures. I have the first 21, is it? Yeah, it's first, so, yeah, first 21, first 20 plus Boba Fett uh, figures in my baseball bat collection. And then I went ahead and threw an LED light in there to backlight it. And it's perfect. It's perfect size. I went ahead and glued the figure stands down so that they wouldn't be sliding around or anything like that. Um, but they're a perfect size display case for your, for, I mean, if you wanted to do it, however you wanted to arrange figures, but it fits 21 figures. Excellent. Like, um, like it's almost, it should be renamed, uh, the first 21 case instead yeah. of a baseball bat display yeah. case. Um, Trevor's got one too. Yep. Uh, do you have one, Josh? I do. Not used yet. Okay. But a remodeling of this room has allowed some space. And and perhaps some opportunity. Some opportunity. Okay. Um, the football case, I, I use the uh, football display case. And, and I, what I really like about the football display case is that the back is a mirror. So right. It, it, so you see both sides. So you see both sides. But um, I, I have my last 17 figures in that. And again, we'll we'll post a couple pictures up of what that looks like. But um, I went ahead and and cut a, just a couple pieces of wood so I could kind of create tiers. Mm -hmm. So there's like three rows of figures on different levels, so you can see all three, and uh, just spray painted in black so you couldn't see them underneath. And and they're perfect size, perfect size for the. Uh, Last 17, the baseball bat was perfect size for the first 21. It's a good tip. It's a good place to find. And make sure with Michael's, like any other store, they have sales. And so you can usually coupon those things out. Never play, pay a uh, rack rate or retail price. You can always find a buy one, get one or 50% off yeah. or something like that. So yeah. you can definitely uh, uh, enhance your display capabilities um, for cheaper than, you know, sticker price around. Yeah. So at Michael's, here's a Michael's hack for you. Go in and buy something cheap. And then on the receipt, they always, yeah, yeah. There's always a, like a 30% Go off. Go get your or, My Little Pony coloring book. Or, and then, hey, Josh, you can buy Funkos at uh, Michael's. Just, just shut up. Man. They have those. I did another hole. I'm not I walking know. in there. Now I won't go to Michael's anymore. Um, I'm just kidding. I've, I'm All jealous. I can't I, wait to I can't wait to come and see your collection and then be happy when I leave and it wasn't mine. So <laughs> what Josh I is referring to, to I have something to trade if you want to. <laughs> what Josh is referring to is that I um am coming into <laughs> a Funko collection and uh I, I have mixed feelings about it. Why? I, I'm excited to get some because I'm not just getting a couple like I have one I I currently own one Funko and probably by the end of next week I'll have about 30 Ooh. so yeah circumstances being what they are and whatever what have you I I I have slipped down the funk hole yeah you sent me a gif of Alice falling down the hole rabbit hole I did perfect it's it's appropriate um, but we digress. Josh, I think you finally finished Alphabet Squadron. Yeah. Jeez. I was like, I don't know if I even want to bring it up. I've talked about it on two or three pods. So, uh, I think I'm a then slow let me, reader. Let me give you just, uh, 30 seconds. Did you like it? Did you love it? How, how does it rate compared to like Master and Apprentice or Dooku that you've also recently yeah. partaken in? Yeah. So first question. Yes, I liked it. And, and would lean towards loved it. The, you know, we talked about it earlier. It's going to be a trilogy. So obviously the door was left open. Um, Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Uh, I'm waiting for more. I want kind of that number two and number three. But 
Master and Apprentice was kind of a beginning and an end type of story. You knew it was fitting in to give you some filler for, you know, some Obi- backstory. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon's uh, relationship, Dooku for that matter. Um, but yeah, Alphabet was good. Well written. And if you listen to it on Audible, um, not a sponsor, but I'll go ahead and plug them. Audible. Uh, <laughs> actually, I think, never mind. Uh, Audible, the narrator is good. She's got a very soft delivery so if uh you're like me and you like to spend 10 minutes listening to audiobooks before you fall asleep she'll help you with that no oh. but very good story um well done a little gritty at times and you got some you know it took me a while uh because i wasn't reading the name myself with my eyes i was listening to to realize that hera from right. rebels was one of the the uh generals on on a ship is it general She's one of the pilots. No, she's a general. No, she's she's an upper now. So okay, she was in in charge of a alphabet squadron, kind of ancillary. But it was good. It was good. So I'm excited about it. And uh, they had a nice twist at the end to keep you wanting more. And for the good next writing. book, yeah, good writing, cool. So high high recommend for that. Uh, Josh, do you have time for a trivia? I think we do. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay. So, and, and you're talking before we get to Dominic, right? Yes. Before yes. we get to before uh, we get to the to the main dish interview with before Dominic. Before we get to the main dish, let me uh, let me throw. Hold you on, we don't have a drop for this yet. Still, do you have that? Um, Move along. No, no. Move no, along. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. I'll do that. Uh, do you want to ask? Do you want to go back and forth? How about we go back and forth? Okay. I'll. I'll Your re- card, by the way, after a pre-screening, is super easy. So I have not pre-screened this one. <laughs> I pre-screened yours, and I'm not happy about it. Okay, it could be uh, we we could call this fifth grade or uh, first grade trivia. Star so Wars. intro to Star Wars trivia. Yeah, yeah, one on one for right. dummies. All right, um, I will try to ask this question uh, in the voice that the quote is given, <laughs> as I like to do. Oh, you know the listeners love a good impersonation <laughs> impression I or. Mean. Or a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> well, they better. <laughs> it's kind of kind of our wheelhouse. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Whose curiosity did Luke Skywalker deflect with the response, ask me again sometime? What? That... I will read it one more time. Mm. Whose curiosity did Luke Skywalker deflect with the response, Ask me again sometime. Leia's. Princess Leia is correct. Ooh, man, that was not easy. <laughs> I uh, was a little nervous for you. Took me a second. All right, ask I me. I had to like go through the movies real quick in my brain. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and what part of that in, involved you doing any voices whatsoever? Was, was that your best Luke? I was Luke? doing Luke. Your yeah. best Luke is just your own voice? Ask me again sometime. No, I don't know yeah, how. I like it. I like the confidence. You're just like, I sound just like Luke. So watch this. Ask me again sometime. <laughs> That's my Luke. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Because yeah. I grew up as Luke. Yeah, that was. In my mind. Yeah. All right, ready? My mind on my money. Ugh. Who refused? I feel like we did this one, but I screened it, and maybe we didn't. I, I, I'm just you want a different to, card? I do. You know what? I want a different card. Okay. I call for a different card. He put called this card. for a different card. Putting this card in the head of Obi-Wan. Ah, here we go. This one's a good one. Thank you. New card. Boom. Head of Obi-Wan is now the old card holder. Excellent. We needed a place. Who said, who's more foolish? The fool? Or the fool who follows him. Would you please do that in the voice? I feel like we're at the spelling bee. Country of origin. I'm trying to figure out which version this is, though. All right, I'm going to say the answer. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, do you know? Yeah. No, no, yeah, you do. Okay, now I know what version. But I don't, I can't. Well, who's more foolish? Nah. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello there. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get the who's more foolish, the fool. Yeah, no, I mean no one does. Who's Ewan. more foolish? Who, oh, who's more fool? Yeah, you have to do the the fool or the fool who follows him. Yeah, that's bad. Keep moving. I don't know. 
Next question. What ship did Darth Vader's flagship fall, or excuse me, <laughs> fail to capture during the retreat from Bespin? That's a Falcon. What ship did Darth Vader's flagship fail to capture during the retreat from Bespin? The Millennium Falcon is correct. Thank you. Okay. I did not pause. No. But come on. We all knew that. We, all well, right. Get ready. What prevents atmosphere in a hangar bay from escaping into space? Okay. This is, effect. this is a topic that on Twitter will piss people off. To really? No, 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 no. Trivial Pursuit says the answer. That's the answer. <laughs> don't tell Alex Trebek he's wrong. No. Just like you don't tell Trivial Pursuit. I'm telling you, though, it's like, uh, well, you know, explosions in space can't really happen. Well, actually, there's a little oxygen Ooh, in the shape. Well, uh, hmm, well right. actually, guys. So there's the, well, actually, guys and gals that are on Twitter that, you can really get into some nitpicky fights. That's just classic Twitter, right? Classic. Like, well, actually, guys. <laughs> well, actually, guys. Those guys. We understand a technology that was made up as fiction. Yeah. All right, go. Because it's loosely based in reality. What's the answer? What prevents atmosphere in a hangar bay from escaping into space? Uh I, I don't know the answer to this. Blast doors. I don't know the answer to this. <laughs> what prevents the atmosphere? Should I know this? Is this just, just make something up. I mean, you can see out into space. Yeah, I know. Like I don't, you can see, but, but I don't there's know what something that's there. called. I don't know what that's called. I'll it's give like you one a, hint. There's a field. A force field? Okay. How generic. <laughs> Energy field? I don't, I don't... It's caused by... Binders? I don't. I it's don't. a magnetic field. It's a magnetic field. Okay. Sorry. So I don't understand how. One down for Andy. I don't know. That might be I, a first. I don't understand how magnets keep in Ooh. atmosphere because atmosphere is not magnetic. Well, it's just like we don't need to go down the Twitter hole here, do we? It's just like the Earth. It's got magnetic poles well, which help cause well, gravity, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Andy. <laughs> now that's going to burn me right there. That comment right there was full of nonsense. <laughs> All right. What's my next one? <laughs> uh, okay. Is, uh, what group did the emperor dismiss as insignificant? Insignificant. The rebels. The rebellion. Or the rebels. Yeah. The rebellion. I'd give that to you. The rebellion. Yeah. All right. What did the... Pitiful bad. <laughs> what did the Falcon's crew do after leaving Tatooine, according to Han's falsified logs? They jettison in the escape pods. Mm -hmm. AKA abandoned ship. Okay. Very good. I'll give you that one. Okay. I'll give you that one. All right. That's, that's pretty close. No, no, that's um, accurate. What shape? Oh, this one's interesting mm. because I don't know. What mm. shape was the Death Star's conference room table? <laughs> I find your lack of faith disturbing. Half moon. Half moon? Is that your final answer? That's no moon. <laughs> it's a half moon. Oh my God! No, is no, that real? It's, no, okay. it's not. It's circular. It's a circular table. Was it half a circle? It was two halves of circles <laughs> put together. <laughs> you got two empty halves of coconuts and you're banging them together. Full moon. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're down. Tweet at me. Let's hurry this up. Let's hurry this up. It's getting bad. What, what, where did the Wampa take Luke after knocking? The rebel some from kind of, his tauntaun. Some kind of ice cave. The wampa lair. His lair or cave. There you go. All right. What planet did the Death Star orbit to get a clear shot at the rebel base? Yavin. Yep. Four. Battle of Yavin. Good job. Okay. What well, number are you on? Uh, last, last question here. Oh, oh well, last let question. me, because you doubled down on me accidentally. So I'm doubling down on you. Okay. Who locked... In the auxiliary, who locked in the auxiliary power when the Falcon was caught by the Death Star's tractor beam? R two D two. Do we lock in the auxiliary power? Oh, okay. I was thinking he did the little, you know, the beep, beep, wow, and the beep, boop, boop. hyper. Ooh. Oh, but that was the hi that was for the hyperdrive. Okay, you got it. All right, it's all right. We're not perfect. Missed two on that one. Ouch. And you still have one more. Oh. All right. What's my last one? What was Luke's two word response when Han told him to be careful 
before the Battle of Hoth. I know. No, that was Han's response. Oh, damn it. Hold on. Hold on. Okie dokie. Uh, hold on. You too. Be careful. Damn it. And he said, you too. Oh, my <laughs> Josh. Damn. Josh. You got liked, five out of six there, buddy. I liked Okie dokie. All right. Here's your last one. Beat and me. it's your chance. Well, did you miss? Yeah, you missed two. You I already lost. Two. Sorry. I, here's the last three. one. Last one's worth double. Possibly three. Last one's worth... Now nah, this one's too easy. How many seats grace the Falcon's cockpit? Four. Correct. Congratulations, you tied me on a technicality. No. One I made up. I missed two. You only missed one. All right. All right. Thank Good you. Good job. Okay, now we're moving on, right? Yes. Without further ado. Pre-recorded earlier today, but you would never know that unless we told you. I, I don't know why you're telling him. Now I have to edit this out. No, it's... I'm just kidding. Behind the curtain with behind the Holo the Chronicles. Curtain. No, a super, super awesome interview with a really good dude. Like, solid. solid. Especially uh, having the chance to talk with him. Really good dude. So we're super excited. And uh, we hope you enjoy. Uh, get ready for... Our interview with actor Dominic Pace. We would be honored if you would join us. Special guest! All right, Josh, I am very excited to announce that we have a guest with us here on the Hall of Chronicles podcast. He is a 25-year Hollywood veteran, a working man's actor that uh, we've gotten the opportunity to have a couple conversations with. He's a big-time Star Wars fan, and uh, it's our pleasure to introduce Dominic Pace to the podcast. Hi, Dominic. Hey, guys. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. Happy to be here. Hey, Dominic. How's it going, man? This is uh, really exciting for us, for sure. By the way, yes. first guest cred. You got first guest on the Hall of Chronicles cred. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm moving <laughs> up in the world. Thank you. I'm, I'm really uh, happy to be here. And uh, Thanks so much, guys. Really, uh, really excited about the uh, next few months to come there. So with over 100 uh, credits to your name on IMDb, can you now add first first guest of the Honda Hollow Chronicles podcast. Is that, does that qualify? <laughs> you, you, if you guys are on there, I will do it. There's it's a top whole billing. section of self and you'll be up there between deal or no deal and wheel of fortune. And <laughs> I did a game show last year. I ended up winning $50,000 on with Fred Savage. So I would love to add you guys to the, as himself, uh, <laughs> a section of the IMDB without question. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. So Dominic, we, we wanted to have you on the pod for a few reasons, but, um, one of the reasons was that, I don't know, about 20 years ago or so, around kind of the, the debut of The Phantom Menace, you got a feature on the television show Entertainment Tonight. Na, 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 na. Not just for being an <laughs> up-and-coming actor, but because you have a Star Wars collection, and they featured it on the show. Hashtag show me your collection. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, uh, I had the privilege of being flown to Singapore I was the only American in this sort of cheesy spinoff of Saturday Night Fever. It was called <laughs> That's the Way I Like It. And I, I sounds I, good. I tell, yeah, I tell the listeners to, to I, I, I'm a little hesitant in terms of telling you to check it out because it's, <laughs> it's such a cheesy spin. I did a caricature of John Travolta that they just loved. Um, but it was Miramax's um, uh, a, a deal where they picked up this film from Singapore. It was the first internationally distributed film from Singapore. And my publicist at the time, Roger Neal, he said, Listen, he says, you know, this thing's going to go to fine arts theaters. I don't know how many people are really going to, you know, necessarily care about it. Let's call a spade a spade. He says, but, you know, Phantom is coming up. I know you're a diehard Star Wars fan. I had a life-size uh, Han Solo and Carbonite in my living room. Uh, plus, I had some of the icon pieces. I had a lightsaber and uh, also the Jedi trainer and such. So he said, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a, a piece on that. I've got some friends at ABC, George Pinocchio, and then also at Entertainment Tonight, uh, so they were nice enough to come into my closet, of all things, at Entertainment Tonight, <laughs> my studio closet in Hollywood. Nice. Uh, I was shaking there, but uh, it, it was really a, a great piece. And that was such a special time. I don't know if you guys recall that or your listeners, to where it, it was the first time that kind of brought back the magic of childhood, where how uh, those figures were so special to us. And it was so exciting leading up to the release of that. And of course, I was only a few blocks away from Man Chinese Theater, where I, I want to tell you, I think there were some diehard fans that you know, you can check on the internet that they were literally waiting there for a year until that movie premiered. Whoa. So we ended up going to a 3 a.m. show and it was just the most exciting feeling to be able to share with the fans. And 
and our appreciation not only for collecting, but also uh, the franchise that, that the genius of George Lucas has created there. So, so at that time, you had a life-size Solo and Carbonite. That's which how is, you get the ladies, by the way. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Show them, show them you say, hey, let me show you my Solo and Carbonite. You're like, <laughs> I, I'll tell you I know any time. Oh, wait, I was expecting something different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I had also, I had also um, the, there was about 70 or so original figures, and I had almost like, I want to say I was short maybe two or three wow. random ones. So, so that was a big thing. And then Samuel Jackson had a had a first issue released there of his figure, which I loved. Um, I had obviously some old toys. Some of the collectors would freak out that, you know, I, I love playing with my my ships when I was a kid. I didn't oh, necessarily yeah. keep them in a box or I didn't keep it, you know, uh, in a glass case or anything like that. So I have a lot of my ships. But unfortunately, you know, say the, the lid is gone from the Millennium Falcon or the Y-Wing. You know, I've got the the top, um, you know, little uh, area where, you know, the, the the guy gets in. That's all gone. But yeah. it's just the memories I still have. And, and um I still have that those pieces, and they're very special to me, and something I'm going to pass down to my two sons, of course. That's awesome. So, um, going back to your childhood, then um, I've I've heard you talk about the toys that you'd have, and and you know, even when times were tight, you still, you know, mom still got you a few of the figures, and you just played yeah. with them, and you loved yeah. them because they were you know, Empire Strikes Back, you know, mm-hmm. we're about the same age. And so, yeah. you know, some of your memories are are kind of shared with with Josh and I. Yeah. Um, Empire Strikes Back was probably the first one that I saw, but not the first one I saw in a theater. Uh, and uh, I just, for me, it was like, all of those different characters, all, they were good guys, and there were bad guys. And it was just like, we... We played with our stuff just like just like you did. We played with our stuff till we lost them or broke them or they yeah. drowned in a mud puddle and you know whatever, yeah. and we never saw them again. Yeah. But uh, are there any pieces from your childhood that you still have? Oh, absolutely! All the original seventy uh, something uh, loose figures there, and I'm going to oh, cool. actually get a case over the next couple of months to uh, display them there. But yeah, they're for my children. Uh, I, I still managed to keep them. Of course, like I said, the ships got a little bit tarnished over the years, you know, a couple pieces missing here and there. But the figures themselves, I mean, of course, you know, we're missing some of the weapons and uh, maybe some of the capes there here and there. But sure. uh, yeah, they're in a nice plastic bag and preserved. There was a movie, uh, oh boy, about 15, 20 years ago that Frank Whaley did with Kevin Spacey. And the name escapes me now, but where he kidnaps Kevin Spacey. And it's all in regards to the whole Hollywood industry, et cetera. But, there, but Kev, Frank Whaley had this great line in the film. And I think Kevin Spacey asked him why he, he likes movies so much. And you, you touch on a great point in terms of just our childhood and such. It's not only the figures themselves, but it's about the magic of the memories. Right. You know, my grandparents were both alive. They were so inspirational to me. I grew up on a street in Austin, New York, about 40 minutes north of New York City with 30 kids. And those memories, I mean, you know, if you can think, they just had a great movie just come out with Seth Rogen uh, producing called Good Boys. Yeah. Uh, I believe that was the name. <laughs> and also, you know, say the Goonies or Stand By Me. And just those magical memories you had. Not only it's not about the toy, but it's about the special moments that you had, not only with your family, those who were alive, maybe the experience that you had at the theater. It could be with a girlfriend. It could be with your mother, your family uh, that really resonate uh, in such a powerful way. And when you see those figures, I mean, you, you can go to the most famous movie of all time, Citizen Kane. And when when he says at the end, Rosebud, all the money in the world, it, it was really came down to that sled. But the sled represented to me childhood and it represented those magical memories. So in many ways, you know, we, we might be in our deathbed one day with our figures and people <laughs> might be, what the hell are you doing? But ultimately, ultimately what it's about is the juice of life and the memories of of just preserving uh, that beautiful innocence of childhood in so many ways. And that's what Star Wars has always been for me. Well, Dominic, I, that's beautiful, by the way. I think I think that's a really good description because it's really hard to articulate sometimes, you know, especially uh, we've talked about it a few times on the pod when you yep. bring over um, your adult friends and, <laughs> and they happen to pass by your closet or your, yeah. <laughs> in my case, an office and see the toys and they're like, what the hell is wrong with you? But they're also <laughs> in awe you know, a little right. bit at like, wow. And, yeah. and, and what you just said was, was maybe a perfect way to kind of just say, you know, and, and I just said, it's like, Hey, yeah, I'm a kid. And that's, yep. that's the stuff I couldn't have when I was a kid. And it's all the stuff that some of it I did have. And, and like yeah. you, I had ships that were 
are missing parts and 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 figures but that's it it's just like there's nothing like picking up the millennium falcon and opening that top and remembering when you stuffed that little guy down under the under the smuggler's hold there and uh, yep. then you found him three years later and you're like yeah there he is you know and so <laughs> yeah hey and i'll tell you something else i mean i know sometimes it's sort of a a cliche, you know, it kind of gets sort of maybe sometimes a, a nerdy uh, label and such. But I'll tell you, it's, it was the exact opposite for me, because for me, even as an actor, when you're in touch with your heart, when you're in touch with your childhood um, and when you're honest and open that way, I can't tell you how special some of the relationships were for me with my girlfriends. You know, and, and I say that I don't mean to be say plural, that they were all at the same time, <laughs> but I just mean, you know, individually, just the the special oh, yeah. intimacy that you have with a woman in regards to having your heart open and being that childlike person to where you're able to express yourself to, to a woman or to, you know, your, your high school girlfriend uh, actually brings you closer in relationships. So I know sometimes it's like, Oh, you know, you, you know, you're, you're geeky or whatever or nerdy, but it was the exact opposite for me to where I was so connected to a lot of my girlfriends in regards to always keeping that innocence of childhood, which I do as an artist now uh, as an actor uh, as well there. Do you hear that? Do you hear that listeners? It's cool. You can get ladies with the toys. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you can be a collector and have and a girlfriend. <laughs> we have Dom- wives, so I mean, yeah, Dominic, we're, Dominic it's a done deal. So, the seal of approval, so go <laughs> Dominic's got you. <laughs> Do, um, so Dom, uh, I guess, good transition here to your family now, now that yeah. you're a dad. Um, uh, your kids, um, how old are they again? Uh, now they're 14 and 11. Okay, so Perfect. they're like perfect age i bet i bet you and they are just excited to go see episode nine yes and um i've heard you talk th- that uh you guys were in, are into legos yes right? you guys like putting the the sets together um yes. lego just announced this week that they're dropping a new uh ultimate collector series star destroyer oh <laughs> And it's... You got room on the ceiling for that? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it's so funny. I was just at a Disney store the other day because they had the Death Star, but it was like, I think it was like an extra size. Right. And he's like, you want to take a guess of the price? So the only thing is, I think a lot of us husbands, you know, you got to combat with the wives. I got my cousin, he loves autographs. He collects uh, athletic autographs and also celebrity autographs. Yeah. But it's always, you know, trying to tell the wife, hey, this Lego is 800 bucks. You know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, but we there's so many pieces. Rough. Yeah. So, yeah, I, so this Star Destroyer. Don't... I think it's around five six hundred dollars, and okay. it's about five thousand pieces. Yeah, and it, and our it's, next piece, it's huge. Our next piece is the Y wing. We uh, we don't have the Y wing, so that's going to be the one for uh, for this Christmas there. Gotcha. Okay, I won't so say he's following goals. See, oh. that's one of our yeah. one one of our rules. You got a goal, you stick to it. Yeah, you, you, you don't get just, interrupted by a giant star destroyer that flies in front yeah. of your face. <laughs> but I just want to I want to touch on something with uh, with fathers, and and also just you know. Uh, if you're an uncle or what have you, one of the things that's been so special on my youngest right now, uh, you know, building up to nine and built when we built up to eight and we build up to seven is just the really special. Uh, I mean, these special conversations we have in the car, uh, sometimes when we're on the way to school or just, you know, heading to a theme park or what have you. of just the speculation and the magic of that in and of itself of, you know, your son going to you and say, you know, when you tell him the story and, you know, how passionate you are to tell him the story of Luke and the emperor and such. But the speculation that my kids have where it's like, Dad, you know, maybe this is I, this is what I think is going to happen or this is what I think is going to happen. But just to have that passion about this so franchise cool. in such a way that is so above and beyond any movie, any other series, at least in my family, to where it's so exciting. It's so, and that's the beauty of the movie experience to where you're you're, you're anticipating in such a way uh, that creates this really special bonding time with your sons and your family and, and your loved ones. No, no doubt. No doubt. My oldest is 12 and, yeah. uh, he probably wouldn't outwardly say it, but he loves star Wars. Um, he's even asked if he could start collecting some figures and, yeah. uh, it, you know, of course, of course I love sharing that with him. Um, yeah. and, uh, I've got another son who's six and he's super into Legos right now. He's just mm-hmm. finding out about those. And we get, you know, we get to share that together too. Cause the star Wars Legos just ends up being more things that we end up doing together. We, we yeah. have more of those things in common and we can share those moments together so that when he's my age or when they are my age, they'll, they'll know what it's like to connect with their dad 
you know, yeah. in a, in a positive way and have some common memories that were, that were really good and, and kind of healthy c- yeah. coming up. And, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm so thankful that star Wars is a vehicle for families to find common ground and, and to, yeah. and to experience, to have actual memories, you know, positive mm-hmm. memories from your childhood, um, you know, generationally, because yeah. I associate a lot of my early Star Wars memories with some cousins of mine. They mm-hmm. were a little older than me. And my yeah. uncle, who had the movies on Betamax that we used to watch. And and so now, now I'm in that role where I'm sharing it with some, you know, younger so with the next generation, so to speak. And then uh, you know, it just it just keeps moving. It just keeps yeah. moving. Well, and I you get- know, one one other section, you know, we don't focus on that much, but you know, it resonates to even children, even before the words, before the figures and everything else. But I, I was telling a, 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 I was telling a reporter the other day, but just the magic of John Williams that we, we overlook sometimes as far as the fact for George Lucas to have not only chosen this this genius of a man, yeah. but to give him the green light to have. And, and a lot of times, you know, even as an actor, it's like a director will tell you, hey, listen, I need you to scale it back. I need you to bring everything back because it's not about you necessarily, or we want to play this sort of in a subtle way. But how beautiful he has hit a home run, and I'm sure it will be nine times after episode nine uh, in such a way that resonates with people from all over the world because it's such a universal language of some of the most powerful music I have ever listened to. And that's another thing, you know, you talk to girls or whatever, which, you know, is one of the questions you you, uh, you you ask or you answer when you're on a first date or what have you, what's your favorite music? And most people say classic rock or 80s music. And I'll say, you know, it's movie scores. And that the, the predominant reason for that is the magic of John Williams, which has really uh, resonated in such a way over the years that it's been so powerful. And it's something that a lot of actors use in order to get fired up and pumped up and athletes do as well uh, before a game or before filming. Yeah, that's perfect. John Williams is awesome. I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more there. I grew yeah. up humming every one of those songs. I mean, those songs, you listen to them once and you know yeah. them. That's what's really interesting about them. And then, yeah. you know, uh, even across like Indiana Jones and Superman, <laughs> oh, I would yeah. have, sometimes you start the score and you're like, which song am I doing? And then you just finish it. doesn't matter. Yeah. You just finish Absolutely. it. That was what my mom and dad used to play was name that score. And 90% yeah. of the time they were John Williams scores, you know. And Well, because he has all the best ones. He does. Yeah, he was the best. Uh, one of my greatest inspirations as a child was my maternal grandfather. Uh, he was in World War II, like so many of our grandparents and uh, uh, grandfathers there. And uh, he was at the uh, uh, Utah Beach, not Omaha Beach, uh, during D-Day. And that was another one that really uh, uh, drove home. It was driven home for me in regards to that soundtrack, and specifically one that was called Omaha Beach, which was just so powerful and really, uh, I think, represented uh, the American spirit and the patriotism uh, so well there in his score. He did such an amazing job with Spielberg there. Well, you already said it. He's a genius. I mean, yeah. All right, Dom, I got a couple of uh, quick fire questions here for you. Sure. All right. What was... As far as you can recall, what was the first Star Wars toy you remember getting? Uh, it well, okay. <laughs> I just think of the playset because that that's the one that really uh, resonates with me the, the most. Um, it was a the Cantina set. It Ooh, was the Cantina, the Cantina set. set. Yes, you okay. Your listeners are familiar with that, and I remember Greedo and Walrus Man, and I remember just how intricate and interesting it was for a five year old to just play with that. We also had a magnetic alphabet board. And I remember the first word that I spelled was Jawa. Um, <laughs> so my mother, I don't know what the original number was, but I remember there was a, a store we had, a department store, very similar to, I guess, a Walmart or Target. It was called Caldor at that time, or Caldors. And what drives me crazy now is I, I will never forget the whole wall of action figures that I, I could swear, I think we're going for $2 and two fifty, which are now valued at probably $400 and $500. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but she got me those original ones. And uh, it was the Cantina set that I remember playing with uh, with those figures there. Uh, the first movie experience, I don't recall uh, the original Star Wars, to be honest, episode four. Uh, but I can't tell you how amazing it was through the eyes of a six-year-old to sit there and watch Empire Strikes Back. The conviction, you know, the one thing for me as an actor is to have that conviction that Harrison Ford has, um, uh, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. The reason is, is because they created such realism for me as a six-year-old, that I believed that universe to such a point that it was otherworldly. And the whole point and the passion of, of movie, uh, a movie-going experience is to take you to another world and have 
that sense of urgency when you're on screen to keep people uh, uh, captivated from start to finish. And Harrison Ford, I just can't say enough about because for me, uh, he's just been my idol ever since I was a kid, uh, just in regards to his passion and his drive, not only with Jack Ryan and Han Solo, uh, but of course, Indiana Jones as well there. Yeah, he, Harrison Ford's awesome. He's the best. Yeah. Hands down, especially after, you know, and I love, by the way, I'm on record. I, Dominic, I know nobody else can see it, but you can see the Solo giant poster behind me. I'm a huge fan of Solo, the movie. Yeah. And so yes. watching Aiden try and navigate through Harrison Ford, which I appreciated that he wasn't trying to be Harrison Ford. And then yes. I went back and watched the the watched Harrison. I was like, there is no way anyone can be this guy. I mean, that's no. and, and it, he did a great job. It was fine. But it was yeah. it was. You just watch it, and, and I don't know, you hear all the stories about how Harrison went about because he thought it was some kind of hokey space movie, and so yeah. he kind of had that nonchalant attitude, but yeah. man, I don't care. I mean, it. I don't know. Nobody else can do it like him. No, and, and the other thing for me, you know, which, you know, I've always been a romantic, and, and, and I love that connection that he had with Leia and with Fisher, and, and you know, again, contrary to belief of modern times, uh, Fisher held up to him a 110%. Oh, gosh, yeah. Just that passion and the love of needing each other, but also at the same time, the conflict uh, was just so, it, it, even as a six-year-old, that you can feel the definition of romance and passion. And uh, it's something that I continue to this day, not only in work, but also in life, you know? Okay, next question. Yeah. What is What was your favorite Star Wars toy from when you were a youth? Huh. You know, I can't say enough about the Falcon, you know, I mean, it really, yeah. you know, to be able to open up the lid in the back and, you know, I would bring down, you know, bring down the, the legs there and, and open the little, you know, thing where they walk up. What's that little, that little ramp there and yeah. pose them and then fly with them. And then also, you know, you had the battery where you're able to hit and it made that little, you know, machine gun sound. Um, you just can't say enough about the Falcon. Uh, I always laugh because every time I buy a lottery ticket, even though they have it at Galaxy's Edge, uh, the one thing I think about, you know, most people would say, oh, I want a mansion. I want this. Of course, we want a beautiful mansion. But I want to have a life-size Millennium Falcon in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to have a man cave in the back section, right, <sighs> where we can watch football and I can have a bar and I can have that little <laughs> little chess circling table, right? Yeah. But that is my dream. And I don't care if it costs $10 million. And I want to open it up, you know, for charities, for kids, you know, and, and kids with disabilities uh, to be able to maybe have a tour every Sunday, uh, with people to come in and, and come to the house. But that's like the first thing I think about. Um, <laughs> Dominic, that's that, beautiful. That's, I'm yeah, crying over here a little was, bit, a little tear. Yeah, it was really one of, uh, it was really one of uh, the, the best toys that I had. And how amazing it was. You know, my kids now, I mean, I'm sure, you, you know, with, with kids or what have you, they got the iPad and they've got a million different venues in terms of entertainment. But how great was it that we would spend an hour, two hours? I remember one Christmas when Santa Claus got me the whole Jabba's, you know, uh, his little set there with uh, Salacious Crumb nice. and uh, all the Return of the Jedi figures. I spent hours in the corner room with my grandparents just literally just playing and creating the whole Sarlacc pit. You know, you'd, you'd, you'd kind of, you know, use other props from the from the house in order to kind of create the whole scene. And, you know, those special memories in terms of, of building and fueling the imagination uh, were so magical to me and something I hold dear to me uh, this day, of course. I had a uh, lightsaber that was um, half of a rotisserie. Uh, th yeah, I, I took stuff out of the cupboards and made Star Wars stuff out of it because, you know, I grew up with, with small means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. So, yeah. That, that's yeah. the that's the best that's the best way to do it. You he, get creative. You, you remind uh, me of uh, uh, the belt of the... We used to use the belt as the bullwhip for Indiana Jones. You, you know, know, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, gosh. Yeah. All day. And, and, and you you would be the luckiest guy around if you could find a cowboy hat just to oh. be somewhat close to yeah. the fedora. Pretty sure I almost Absolutely. shattered my uh, right arm um, when, you know, the, you know now you have garage doors, op garage door openers with safety. Well, ours just yeah. slammed down as hard as possible. And I rolled through that thing about 20 times, reach back, grab the hat, bam. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's so funny, Zach, because even now, you know, with the kids, I was thinking in terms of the Jedi power. I, I mean, it's not, there's not one Star Wars fan that when you got an automatic sliding door, oh. you're not using that. <laughs> oh. Open up. Yeah. <laughs> or the, or the television remote, like turn on, <laughs> turn yeah. on or laying in bed, like, and your wife is asleep and she's the one who's next to the switch. And you're like, 
Use the, just reaching out. Use the force. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Do or do not, man. Okay. Is yeah. there is there any toy from your youth, Dom, that you wish you still had but don't? Um, as far as Star Wars, uh, yeah, because you know I, I remember getting into He Man and Mask and everything else. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. As long as we can, you know, we don't have to stay, uh, uh, you know, loyal to the whole Star Wars community. There was something. Um, there was a whole series where there were six pieces and my, you know, we didn't have much money, so I only had one or two, but they had this whole thing you can form with the series called uh, Voltron. Voltron. Oh yeah. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. And they had the black and the yellow and the, the blue It was almost like a power ranger thing, but right. you could put them all together and create one toy. Mm -hmm. And I remember it being like, it was even at that time, like a hundred plus bucks that, you know, yep. I would never hit my mom up for something like that, but that would have been very special for me. I also had a lot of respect for both the Optimus Prime original and the Megatron uh, original figure as well. That was very uh, special. But of course, you know, Star Wars was always the main uh, the main uh, course there w without question. Yeah. So uh, as far as like Josh and I go, I'll let Josh answer this. But for me, it, it was also G.I. Joe. That, okay. was, that was also big for me. And I've got two brothers that are younger. And so that kind of... They have like that big, huge Navy ship or oh, something yeah, like that. The, the aircraft yeah. carrier. The oh USS flag. Yeah, it's like yeah, seven feet the long. The USS flag. Yeah. <laughs> so original. <laughs> yeah, it's seven feet long, man. It's a beast. It's like, shoot, you can't find a complete one for less than, I don't know, six, seven hundred bucks now. Yeah. I love it. I was uh, outside of Star Wars, uh, Voltron. I'm so glad you brought that up. I watched every every episode, and it was the first time that me and my younger brother, who was two two years younger, connected yeah. on the same toy. Like, mm -hmm. we were into it. So then he was like, I'll get the yellow lion. And I'm like, well, I'll get yeah. the black lion. And so then mom and dad could split their funds, and then we could form a Voltron yeah. <laughs> at the end of that. So it was it was a, yeah. it was a long – and they were made of metal. They were real, man. They were they really were real. real. Yeah, they had some quality to it. And then, of course, some of the Transformers. The other one I wanted to touch on was also Mask. Mask, yeah. I thought, did a great job with those five or six pieces. And, and they made them really well. I really enjoyed that. I had the truck, and then I had the red uh, Corvette-looking thing, and then a, one of the motorcycles that turned into a helicopter. But that really fueled the imagination in, in such a, a great way as well there. Well, from a collector to a collector, I've got a box full of mask. I was never into mask. I don't know what to do with it. So oh. Don, maybe you and I, we got a trade set up here. Hey, we're going to trade. Know. We I don't trade. know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I might take that poster behind here, that banner. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So I think... Uh, I think this would be a good opportunity, Dom, for you to uh, maybe share with our audience a little bit about an upcoming project. Um, you know, being an actor, you know, you've always got your eye on the next project and this and that. But uh, you've got a project coming up that sounds pretty cool in November. Would you like to share a little bit about that? Absolutely. Just for your listeners, I've been at this for 20 years. Um, I had I've had a million different odd jobs from waiting tables, uh, even washing dishes driving Uber, um, working for moving companies. And in between all of that, I've managed to accrue 100 credits, uh, everything from guest stars on NYPD Blue to Desperate Housewives um, to uh, NCIS and the district and General Hospital. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, the reason I got involved in this business was because the magic of specific directors when we were children. One, of course, George Lucas. You can talk about Steven Spielberg, Richard Donner, Joe Dante, Robert Zemeckis. Um, these were an, a tremendous influence on my life. Then we talk about the actors, you know, specifically with the Star Wars universe. Um, Harrison Ford, to me, who really fueled the energy and the testosterone of being a man, to me, what being a man is all about, and, and also to perform and to create and to also leave something behind for people in such an amazing, magical universe uh, that has been so priceless, not only to myself, but to millions across the world. Um, I went in for, I, I don't turn down work. I take every type of job, no matter what it is. Uh, I was happy to leave the restaurant. I was a regular job uh, about four or five years ago. And I promised my wife, I said, no matter what, I don't care what the job is each day. Uh, they have independent contracting jobs here in LA. I'm happy to take it. I got called um, for a simple makeup test uh, by a company that is uh, very popular out here. Uh, one of the top makeup companies between Marvel and Disney, uh, Legacy Effects. And um, it was a very nice gentleman that I met. Uh, he's probably one of the heads of uh, Legacy Effects. His name is Brian Sipe. And I went in for just a simple makeup test where they split my face in half. 
Uh, they were testing one side for different prosthetics. They were testing the other side for different makeup. Um, I was just really genuine. I sat in the chair for six hours, uh, just completely patient. I developed a really strong rapport with this gentleman. And at the end, I gave him my business card. Well, a couple of weeks later, I ended up getting a phone call for a, a code name project uh, that was taking place in the South Bay. Uh, that project <laughs> happened to be The Mandalorian. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't tell you, uh, again, I, I can't really talk much about it, but I just can't tell you how privileged and honored I am to be a part of my childhood franchise, something that has meant so much to me. Um, just a little featured bit, but again, for me, it represents so much, not only uh, you know as an actor, but also as a fan, um, to be able to create and to be a unique, different character within this universe is just something beyond anything I could have asked for. It's humbling, just like my career. There's, I'm not one of the stars. Um, but again, just to be a part of this magic of the people that have inspired me and have, have really motivated me throughout the whole my whole career, uh, especially the music of John Williams and also just the, the creation that George Lucas has left behind and poured into John Favreau and David Filoni and Kathleen Kennedy and so many of these amazing leads that we're about to see, Pedro Pascal and Gina Carano and Carl Weathers. Um, I just can't say enough about it. I would literally take all my credits and have traded it in for this one or two weeks that I had the privilege of uh, being a part of uh, my childhood fantasy. And uh, I can't tell you how excited I am and how nervous I am, even just for a few of these screenshots over the next 60 days there. We're really excited. So we're excited for you too, Dominic. Dom, we're super excited. This... I'm like vicariously living through that whole statement. I'm just like, that's it right there. What a, what a beautiful statement. Yes, yeah, so you're like... Uh... You're like my hero now, Dominic, yeah. Yeah. because you get you are getting to live, a, a, you know, just a a glimpse of that life that we all think and imagine for ourselves. Like, I, I wonder what it'd be like to have a part in a Star Wars something or other. Like, anything. you know, it's funny you mention that because there was one time uh, during the filming where my back was away from the camera. And I'm looking around, you know, and, 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 and there's a lot of people there for work. And what broke my heart was that fans like yourself and so many people. And again, I mean, it's just it is what it is. You know, when you, you, you know, these people also pay their dues and they work very hard in order to get there. But I, I wish I could have taken my eyes and I could have put it into every uh, fan in terms of their dream, because there was one part to where my eyes were away from the camera. And the great thing about actors is that, you know, we use our imagination. We're able to create that world almost like. Uh, a scene from the matrix to where you create the universe. Yeah. And I wish I could have brought everybody into my mind and my eyes to have for literally just about a minute or so felt like I was immersed on a different planet oh, and in a cool. different universe. Uh, it was so magical. And, and for the, the, the things that I was seeing uh, was so special. And I wish I could have shared that with every fan. And uh, like I said, in about two months, uh, you'll all have the opportunity to, uh, to feel that magic as well there. That, I mean, Josh and I are are probably just as excited for the Mandalorian. I'm a little goosebumpy right now. That was cool. <laughs> We're probably cool. just as excited for that to drop as we are episode nine. I think you know the hype of nine episodes, you know, eight episodes in front of episode nine, building up to this one point. Probably the like, there's a lot of groundswell for that just naturally. But yeah. the Mandalorian, the trailer, you know, that dropped recently. It just looks so cool and and kind of in a different direction than what we've, you know, it, there are, I'm sure, and I'm, don't let me put words in your mouth, but I'm sure that there's probably a couple of, uh, you know, characters that we might recognize, but we're going to get a new story, a new thread, probably new worlds, new, I mean, just, it's all going to be new and we're not going to have... We're not going to have previous movies to go on to kind of give us expectation. Like our, we can't make predictions. Like one of the great things like you had touched on about Star Wars is that, you know, talking with your kids, predicting like, oh, what do you think is going to happen next? You know, but we can't do that with The Mandalorian. We, we are coming in with fresh eyes, with mm -hmm. a genuinely new experience. Yeah. And, and that... That for me, and if you've been on Twitter at all, Star Wars Twitter, for any amount of time, it's going to be totally refreshing because yes. there's not going to be the back and forth like, well, this should happen. No, this should happen. Or no, I think this is going to happen. If it doesn't, it's going to ruin it for me. We we yeah. won't have that opportunity because it's going to be fresh. And I can't yeah. wait for that. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think you got to take a moment and just marvel at John Favreau's career, not to mention Filoni, but most importantly, he's so money. They, yeah, these guys have <laughs> grown up, and it. and I think they've seen what we've seen. They know what you know the the, the fan base loves, and I I think uh, there's a lot to be excited for because I think they're going to bring that. Uh, to the universe there in, in so many ways. And, and obviously for many, many years to come through Disney Plus there, uh, I think we have a lot to be excited about and and, uh, and good reason there for it. What a good time to be a Star Wars fan too. I mean, literally in November, we have that whole new, like you said, a whole new moment to, or a whole new, you know, uh, idea to follow. And then, and then the close. So mm -hmm. it said the close of the, the end of the Star Star Skywalker, Skywalker saga. saga. Yeah, I don't know. I, we're we're a positive pod. We've always said that we, you know, everyone can have their gripes, but we're always driving towards the uh, the best parts of Star Wars and all the things that you've already laid out so eloquently. And yeah. and and that's the best part. I, I think, like, yeah, you can dwell if you want on a couple scenes that you didn't like, or you can dwell on exactly what you've talked about, which is the connections you make generationally. Yeah. and uh, toys and movies and experiences you know I, I think for those listeners and those fans I, there was one great little pov that i had you know about a year or two ago in regards to understanding that this is a universe for everyone you know and i think that what they're, they're they've created and what they will continue to create is special moments and special inspiration for everyone you know i was with my wife uh and i i got a, we were at the movie theater and she was talking about a a female-led um, uh, project. Uh, it was, there was a, I'm sorry, there was a woman that was uh, at the concessions, and she was she was serving us, and she was so genuinely excited about a new superhero thing that was coming up that she was really genuinely looking forward to, and you could see it in her eyes, you know. Yeah. And and I don't mean this is not necessarily a gender or race or social or a scene thing, but what it really opens our eyes to is that what may not be special for us might be special for another fan. And and the beauty of Star Wars is, again, it, it's to cater to people of all different ages and genders and races, et cetera, et cetera. And then also the storyline, what, what may not mean too much for us, it might be the most powerful thing for somebody else. And, and how beautiful that is, where, where we have our inspiration, me in particular from episode five, uh, could be completely amazing for somebody through episode eight, where they saw it as a six-year-old, or they saw Phantom Menace when they were seven years old, and they were completely moved by Jar Jar and the pod race, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, and again, I think if we keep an open mind in regards to that, I think we know the direction that they're heading in. And again, we need to be just selfless in terms of understanding that it's an appreciation and, and, a, and a gift to everyone of all different uh, walks of life. So you have a credit to your name for working for Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., correct? Uh, yes. Yes, I actually know I, I know this the episode you were in. I, I actually remember the scene and everything. I yeah. When I pulled it up, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's dumb. Okay, yeah. that's cool. So you have gotten to work for Marvel mm -hmm. and Star Wars. And, uh, yeah, and you could add DC to that next year. Uh, we got bit, uh, with the, uh, the Harlequin movie there. So uh, Ooh, that's cool. I, think I, I hit the trifecta, and, uh, you know, hopefully on the epitaph, you can just put Star Wars, DC, Marvel, and uh, that's all you need to know about it. Wow. <laughs> that's cool. So, so now John Favreau has yeah. done a little work for Marvel, sure. just a bit. And now he's doing a little work for Star Wars. Do you guys, do you guys talk about that? Do you guys like swap stories and like, oh boy, hey, you know. oh God, I wish. But the one thing that did, <laughs> uh, well, I did think about the other day was Kenobi series does take place before the Mandalorian. And the one thing that I was praying was that perhaps depending who's heading it up, uh, they can do a little bit more uh, in, in regards to my character. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Flesh them out. Uh, with Origin maybe, story. Uh, uh, being there in Kenobi. So, you just never know. Uh, but no, you know, it was a hundred million dollar budget. Uh, again, just a featured uh, side character. Um, you know, when you're on set and you're in the major leagues, which this is uh, one of the, the type of etiquette that you have is you're just there to work, you know, and you're there to do your job. Um, you know, of course, we have a little bit of uh, socializing here and there. But again, when you're dealing with a hundred million dollar budget, uh, your job as an actor is to be there. And it's like uh, they tell you to jump and you ask how high and that's it. Um, you know, there's certain sets where you have that time with the director and the connection. Uh, but for this project, again, when you're dealing with this kind of money and it's this magnitude and, you'll, you know, George Lucas is there or Kathleen Kennedy, it's uh, you're just there to work and just be grateful uh, to have the opportunity. Awesome. That's totally cool. 
um, like in the nineties, Samuel L. Jackson seemed like he was in everything, right? Yeah. He got, he got a, he got a part in all the, all the big movies. And, and now it si- kind of sounds like you're, you're the next version of that. You got, you got <laughs> hey, parts Bob, in everything uh, now. Uh, no, you know, on a blue collar, little, you know, bit <laughs> character scale. Absolutely. But uh, no, I mean, those guys are at the upper A-list stratosphere for me. It's just more of a fan and, and, a, and a blue collar actor to where, you know, we're, we're, yes, we're definitely achieving that, but just on a, a much smaller scale. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. You get to live, we get to live our dream through you, essentially. I haven't got to met you a little, meet you a little bit and, and converse with you. And, and we're, we're totally psyched for The Mandalorian. We're, we're pumped for you. We're totally glad that you're a, you're a good-looking Hollywood guy that's got a wife and a family who was also a collector. Oh. You're just like, you're a unicorn. You're hitting, you're checking <laughs> off all my boxes. I might have a little crush on you. I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you, but you know, it's so funny. Not a week goes by to where sometimes you're just praying for that steady paycheck, you know, and it just never happens. But I'll tell you, you know, things just end up falling in my lap each week. I just got blessed this week uh, or today uh, where, you know, I got upgraded uh, uh, to a stunt. So I got paid uh, triple the amount that I thought I was going in with. So, hey, all right. Know, <laughs> Yeah, you just never know. But, you know, as long as you keep moving your feet, good things happen. The other thing is, I I just want to single out two specific movie stars. One was Hugh Jackman. I doubled on uh, Van Helsing years ago as Frankenstein. I was standing in. I was photo doubling a little bit. And then also I was one of the orcs on Bright. Um, The attitude that that these two actors have, even after 14 hours and most likely 100 plus million dollars in their bank account, is one that where they are so genuine and such hardworking actors that you are so inspired by that when you're close to that, uh, that you, you, you expect nothing less for yourself from yourself uh, when you're working and when you're hustling. Um, you know, everybody thinks, you know, you get this so-called, quote, big break, but the big breaks happen when you work hard and then you have those opportunities by being a good person and you work hard and a lot of good things happen, not only in the entertainment industry, but also in life. Well, I had an old basketball coach that used to say, um, there's no such thing as good luck. It's just when hard work meets opportunity. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, sounds like, sounds like you're living that right now. Your hard work is, uh, is paying off and, and, uh, yeah. we couldn't be happier for you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. You're, you're a inspirational, uh, thank you. I, I like your uh, term of, you know, blue collar actor. I think, yeah. I think that's like, you know, you can easily identify with that. You know, if you're anywhere outside of Hollywood, you don't understand how Hollywood works. Right. And, and, I, and yeah, I, I was working on a low budget, uh, a film. I started in a sci-fi movie. I, I, I can't recommend it just because they were trying to squeeze a hundred million dollars into a $50,000 budget. But I start <laughs> off with Michael Madsen and this, uh, corny movie called Megalodon and it was uh, it aired uh, this Ooh. year and also last year but you know the one thing is we were running through 14 pages a day and I was going to the director and I said I don't have no idea how this job ever turned into some kind of uh, uh, diva uh, glamorous uh, uh, occupation <laughs> because we're sitting there grinding it out and, and sucking it out and they're just like hey Tom can I get you any you know this or that I'm like no 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 I mean we're here to work you know um, yeah, I mean, it, it just, it really is blue collar for me. Uh, if there's any time where I have that kind of attitude, please come to Hollywood and give me a nice big kick. <laughs> uh, because I, I tell you, you know, again, it, it's a matter of just being humble and grateful to be able to do what I love is more of a gift than in and of itself than any type of airs of, 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 of grandeur of being, you know, feeling like you're above it all. Um, especially, like I said, being around some movie stars who have inspired me uh, to where they always stay grounded and humble as well. Dan. Well, you're an awesome dude. You're a, you're a father and uh, just and, a, a good guy. I'd love to have a beer with you type of guy. So um, we will be down in Anaheim for Star Wars Celebration next summer. Are you Is that something you plan on attending? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we'll see where, where everything goes after uh, November 12th there. Uh, you know, we'll see what's up, but without question, I'd love to meet up with you guys, uh, regardless of whether I'm, I'm, um, invited or not, but, uh, <laughs> it would be great to meet you guys in person. We'll invite without... you. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah, we, we've we'll, officially we'll, invited you. We'll figure oh, it out. We <laughs> yeah. then I'm there. Uh, uh, we, we check our email daily to see if Bob's, uh, emailed us our invite uh, yeah. for the panel. Bob Iger. Bob, Bob, Bob Iger. We call him Bob. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> For a panel invite. Well, we'll see. Uh, no email today, but tomorrow's okay. another day, right? So, we're, hey, we're good. W- one more question before uh, we let you go. First of all, thanks so much for hanging out with us for this time here. We're 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 pre- we're very appreciative um, of that. Please. But uh, now that 
now that you're in an, in a in a Star Wars entity, what what do your kids think about that? You know, it's so funny. I I had this big action scene in Megalodon, and I took my older son down where I had this big fight scene with this Russian guy. He's taller than me. I'm six three and a half. He's six five. <laughs> And I, I got to tell you, it's really unfortunate. If you come from, say, Kansas or Indiana and you come to a movie set for the first time, especially as a six-year-old or 10-year-old, your jaw is just dropping. Um, you know, we're all holding our breath. Obviously, we just want to make sure these, these screenshots are solid. Um, but at the same time, I got to be honest, the kids have been slightly desensitized. They had the stars of NCIS hold them when they were babies. <laughs> um, I, I actually am uh, friends with Nick Nicholson. And Nick Nicholson is the nephew of Jack Nicholson. Their next door neighbor was Marlon Brando. And uh, Nick would call him Uncle Marlon when he was 10 years old. And I'm sitting there, he's telling me these stories. Or even Warren Beatty he'd call him Uncle Warren. He had no idea who these people were. So the same thing with the kids to where they've been around it for so long. I think once we, we see the screenshots and once they come through, you know, a lot of times they, they do a million different camera angles and shots. Um, I think it will certainly resonate with them. Um, but they're just such great kids. They're so down to earth and grounded. Um, but the fact that they've been around it since they were kids, it's, it's not as special as it might be. There's somebody who might be from Kansas. But the one thing I do hope, if the character does resonate with the fan base, that's a nice little featured side character, is I hope to meet so many of them throughout the country through comic conventions and also charities uh, to where I'm able to touch them in that magical way uh, that, that a lot of people uh, get from Hollywood in, in uh, the way that inspires them there. Awesome. Well, if there's a, if there's a Dominic Pace fan club, uh, sign us up. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. We're in for sure. And, and I think you couldn't have planned this any better because if there is a group of fans out there that can get jazzed up about, you know, uh, a re yeez or a, or a Klaatu kind of a <laughs> guy that, you, you know, you, you'll see in a few scenes, um, but not a not a featured performer. I think it's the Star Wars universe. It is. They will. They will. They are going to lap you up, Dom. Dom, you're going to be the that's, yak face. Please um, let me be the yak um, face, <laughs> and that's we're, that's we're praying on. <laughs> that helps like a lot of plane rides uh, all over the place next year, just to again celebrate our little side character with all the the fans who are are just absolutely amazing. Well, thank you so much. Awesome. Yep. Dominic, thank you once again for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to November 12th, along with millions of other people to see, uh, see, just, just to see, we're just going to see, we're going to take gonna it gonna in. Enjoy it. And we're going to love it. Yeah. And 100%. it's going to be fresh and new. And we're probably going to cheer and high five when you come on screen. We might, uh, we might, uh, we might throw our popcorn in the air. We're gonna, uh, we my... might have a Dom react video. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God, we're praying, praying, praying. And, uh, you know, you'll make it, bro. Uh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. You got it. A big thanks again to Dominic Pace for being gracious enough to join us on the Hollow Chronicles. We hope you enjoyed that interview. It was a lot of fun for us. Make sure to follow us at Hollow Chronicles on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks again. And may the force be with you. Mace lives, 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 lives. This party's over. What you say, Mace? Take a seat. Who's there?